I am Dr. Trina Dennis and I have been devoting the last few years of my life to an in-depth study of the science of hula hooping and today you are going to be fortunate enough to share in some of my discoveries. So, to start off with, this is what I call hula hooping. You can see that the hula hooping is travelling around my waist without descending to the floor. Let's start by doing a small experiment. Now, if I hold my hoop like this and let go, what will happen? <laughs> it falls to the ground. This is due to gravity, which is a force. There is attraction between the planet and the hula hoop. They are attracted to each other, but because the hula hoop is much smaller than the planet, it's the hula hoop which does most of the movement. Now, you can see now that the hula hoop is not falling towards the planet. This is because I'm applying an upwards force, which is the same size as the downward force, but the gravity is applying with my hands, so the hula hoop cannot fall through my hands. Now, if I do that, there is nothing really underneath the hula hoop. You might think that my hips might be helping a little bit, but if I do this, you can see the hula hoop is staying up and it's got nothing to sit on there. So there's something else happening. So it must be something to do with the movement of the hula hoop. So let's try moving the hula hoop without it having any contact with the body. And I've seen quite a lot of people trying to hula hoop this way. Maybe thinking it works like a helicopter? Let's have a try. It doesn't work like a helicopter. It's not moving fast enough. It's not the right shape. It's not aerodynamics keeping the hula hoop up. Well, what other forces are there? There's electricity and magnetism. So maybe I've got hidden magnets. There's a fridge magnet. I'll try that on my hula hoop. No. My hula hoop has no hidden magnets of any sort. It does not stick to my fridge. So, what force can it be? There's only one force left, and that's friction. It has to be friction. Because if you twirl the hula hoop and it's touching the body, so there's friction between the hula hoop and the body, it's staying up. But if it's friction, if it's the contact between my body and the hula hoop, um, then if I hold it up to my body and let it go, then it should stay up because the friction should be applying an upwards force um, to balance out the downward force of the <laughs> gravity. So let's have a try that. It doesn't work. So somehow we have to make the friction higher. So I'll talk a little bit about friction now. And I'm trying to explain it to you because it's a really complicated force. It's not I'm trying to put you off anything. Right, I'm trying to visit my hand, saying hello. This, um, I'm trying to illustrate a bit of friction using just a heavy object, which is water and my um, worktop here. Now, um, you get friction whenever you have two surfaces in contact. So in this case, it's the bottom of my mortar and the worktop. Now, two types of friction. There is static friction when the two, ob um, the two surfaces are not moving to relative to each other, so they're not sliding against each other. And kinetic friction, where the two surfaces are sliding against each other, which I call slippy friction. So, what we have here for the static friction is I apply a force with my finger, just a light force here, and the mortar is not budging to start with. And this is because I'm applying a force in that direction. The friction is applying force in that direction, which counteracts my force. But when I apply a big enough force, then the grippy friction gives up, and you get slippy friction. So, how can we increase the friction between two surfaces? Well, it, friction depends on the surfaces. So one thing I could do, I could coat the bottom of this with oil, which I'm not going to do. However, I can put it on a smooth tray and then it moves more easily. 
if I want, so that decreases the friction. So it depends on the type of surfaces. If I wanted to increase the friction, silicon baking mat, then it's much less willing to move. And when it does, it doesn't slip. So from work that, we can conclude that to increase the friction, we can change what we're wearing. This is for hula hooping, obviously. Um, we can um, wear clothes which aren't very slippy. So silky clothes are not very suitable for hula hooping. And we can make our hula hoops more grippy. Now, this is what I use. I'll just show you here. This is horse bandage. And it's sort of horse bandage. It's, called, it's quite rubbery. It's called cohesive tape, and it sticks to itself, as you might see here. This is hockey grippy tape. And some people might call this cheating, putting this on your hula hoops, but I find it makes tricks a hell of a lot, I mean, a terrible lot easier. So I've got a nice grippy tape on my hoop, so hopefully that will help. But we'll test, have a try and see if the friction is strong enough with the grippy tape to hold up the hoop. Well, it kind of slows moving down a bit, but it's not strong enough by itself. We need something else. And what we need is a bit of pressure. If you think about when you're opening a jam jar or something like that, you're wanting to get a good grip on it, because it's annoying when you try and open a jam jar and your fingers will slip. Um, you grip on more tightly to it. Somebody with strong hands is better at opening jam jars than someone with weaker hands. Um, and the same idea applies to any sort of friction really, if you increase, increase the pressure between two surfaces, it makes it harder for them to slide along each other. So, is this strong enough to hold up a hula hoop? Well, if I go like this and just put my thumbs on the inside of the hula hoop, like that, so they're not underneath, but I'm pressing outwards, I'll see if I can find the right spot. So, it can so I am not... Um, I haven't got any fun under the hula hoop. This is purely friction. So you can, if you apply enough pressure, um, make friction strong enough to hold up a hula hoop. If I release the pressure, it will slip down. 